Hey guys, Ray from Love you RV. So a little update on our snowbird trip, 2022-23. It's just gotten underway. Uh, we left uh, Victoria, British Columbia on November 2nd and took the Coho Ferry, as we usually do, across to Port Angeles. Uh, it was a beautiful sailing. It was a calm, sunny day. Really enjoyed the, the crossing. Uh, coming into the border crossing, a lot of people are wondering what did they ask you and stuff. It's always sort of different. Uh, this time they wanted to know about our food, which is common, but they also wanted to know if I had any alcohol or tobacco. Just kind of weird to, to be bringing Canadian alcohol in. It's so much more expensive in Canada. But anyway, that was their question. They asked where we were going. And and on the Victoria side, the, the immigration, U.S. immigration actually wanted to see our vaccine, uh, proof of vaccination, which was odd too. I thought that was all over, but I guess it's not. Um, so then they, they let us through and said, have a good trip. Uh, first stop we did because we took the four o'clock ferry for four in the afternoon over to Port Angeles. So we just headed straight to the Walmart. Uh, they allow you to, to dry camp in their back parking lot out of the way back there. And I think they like that because a lot of, uh, you know, Canadians are coming across and usually you can't bring any fresh food so a lot of times we just get rid of all our fresh food vegetables meats and everything then when the guy asks we just say we have no fresh food and we don't really get inspected sometimes they do but then there's nothing for them to seek because you never know what you can bring or not sometimes it's usually they don't like tomatoes or or citrus fruits stuff like that but sometimes there's odd things like potatoes or whatever so just easier for us to go and restock up so we went in there restocked up and spent the night it's actually a nice view from there there was nice snow on the olympia mountains there olympic peninsula mountains so nice view from that walmart uh and, and the next day it was kind of getting cloudy but uh, we couldn't leave right away because my next stop i had booked was in Chehalis, washington at the veterans museum it's part of the harvest host network I'm a Harvest Host member. You pay, I think, $99 a year. And then you have access to all these different cool stops like wineries and farms and museums. I really like the museums because you usually get to stay for free. And the thing is, they expect you to go in and maybe see the museum or give a donation or whatever. So on the way up uh, in the spring, I stopped there. And really, the guys were great there. It's all volunteer staff and ni nice little museum. And the parking lot was pretty good. It's right beside the highway, so if you don't like highway noise, not good for you, but we don't care. So nice level parking lot and everything. So, But they had a special event on, the guy communicated to me, so he, he said it ends at 4. So I thought, oh, well, we'll arrive after 4, then they're open till 5. And uh, so we, we didn't leave Port Angeles till around noonish, 1 o'clock. And started then it started to pour rain, so we had to go down through the Hood Canal. It's quite windy road, pouring rain, but quite used to that. It's often raining there. I'm used to the drive and everything, so it wasn't too much of a problem. And we ended up arriving about 4:30, um, and I said, "Oh, I'll come in the museum the next day." And uh, also, I asked him if we could stay an extra night because the weather forecast looked for quite the wind and rain the next day there was going to be a, a huge storm this is when the, the kind of adventurous part so far started the weather's been kind of wild here in uh, washington and oregon the last few days so it just started to pour now, it wasn't too windy where we were but it poured and poured that day and so I went, Ann and I went in and looked in the museum. It's kind of a cool little museum. It's more kind of artifacts from each war and, and the people in the war, the families have kind of donated different things, their uniforms and things they brought back. So it's more a little story. So it can take you a long time to go through it because each little display is a whole little story. So we went in and looked at that, then came back out. And that's when I started looking at the weather and I noticed there was starting to be a flood watch. And I'm like, oh, that's not good. Because that museum is in a low-line area. And I remember from the spring, one of the displays the guy showed me was this major flood they had. I don't know. I don't know if it was maybe a decade back or whatever. But it actually got so high, it came into that museum. I'm like, oh, my God, we're like six feet below the door to the museum. So I, I paid attention to the flood warnings. Did looked okay if it was a watch. I kind of asked the local 
guys there and they're like, oh, you should be okay. It's not so rain's supposed to trail off. But the problem was it turned to a flood warning at about the 10 o'clock update at night. It said flood warning. So I'm like, you know, you don't want to wake up and have water under the rig. And the access to it floods. The road that comes off Interstate 5 down in the museum is a flood point. So I'm like, oh, we could get trapped in here. So it's like 10 o'clock at night and it's kind of rainy and a little breezy. So I'd made the decision better safe than sorry. I thought we'll just go down I-5 about 20 or 30 miles to a rest stop and that rest stop you can stay eight hours so and it's at high ground and the rest stops at 350 feet high. It's a part I think it's called the Toodle River rest stop which is uh, you know if you remember Mount St. Helens blowing that was the river that that washed down and wiped out a lot of stuff it was a famous for the mount st helens explosion anyway we we're up at high ground but yeah it was kind of a pain going down interstate five luckily because the the weather was kind of crappy there wasn't much traffic but you it was hard to see it was raining so hard and with the lights and everything but anyway we made it to the restaurant safe and sound and got in there parked in there was actually quite a few spaces it wasn't too jammed up or anything so we got in there and overnighted there, got up, you know, in the morning and left around six or seven to our next stop, which was uh, in McMinnville. Uh, there's another museum there, Evergreen Aviation Museum, which is spectacular. It's got the spruce goose. And same thing, it's part of the Harvest Host Network now. So if you show your card, you get the free overnight camping in their parking lot. Um, if you don't have the car, I think they charge you $35, but included is admission to the museum. But it just happened when I got there, it said closed for private function, but one of the staff came out and gave me a parking pass anyway. So we actually never got to go into that museum, but we got to stay nice overnight parking there. And so the next day I got up and I started to look at the weather. Um, our plan for this trip had been to go quickly down to California and get into the w warm weather, you know, get up into the low 20s Celsius um, and get some sunshine because we've kind of been camping off grid in BC in the forest for, you know, a month or so now. And it's kind of the last few weeks have been kind of wet and rainy. So we kind of look forward to maybe getting down to the sun. But that same system was rolling through and it had put winter storm warnings on uh, Southern Oregon and Northern California. There's kind of a big pass. You have to go up a couple of them. Um, it's called the Siskiyou. And you go up there by Eureka, California, and then over Mount Shasta way. And even the, the Interstate 5 can just turn into a mess there. It, it looked like it was going to be getting down near freezing. So it's really dicey with all the, the big trucks that are rolling along there. And then sometimes they demand that you have chains if it hits a certain point. So... It just wasn't worth the, the risk. We're not in any great rush to be down there. So plans changed. Luckily, we don't schedule anything. We just kind of go by the seat of our pants. And because our rig is all set up for dry camping, that sort of thing, we don't have to be at some RV park to hook up or anything. So changed our mind there and decided to head over to the coast where it would, of course, be warmer and no, not much chance of freezing and stuff. Um, so it... Went down I-5 a bit. We had to go down past Eugene before we turned off to head. We headed over to Reedsport, Oregon, kind of down south there. And on the way, I'm looking at the the temperatures. We kind of went through Salem, and, and on my truck's dash, it said uh, about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm watching it, and as we're driving, it's like 39, 38, 37, 36. And I'm looking at the windshield, and... And, the, and it's starting to look like maybe it's a little bit sleety. It's not rain anymore. And it was pouring the whole way. Um, and then it hit down 33 and it was getting bigger. So I, I hit the next rest stop and just poked myself in there so we could reevaluate how, how much is, is this going to turn into a big snowstorm. Got on our phones and stuff and looked at the, the weather forecast. And this seemed to be the worst spot. It was just kind of sleet it was sticking to some cars but not to the road or anything and I looked ahead we were about 20 miles from Eugene and that Eugene was actually 40 degrees so we were just in kind of a weird spot where a snow squall was kind of going 
um, continued on and it did the temperature went right back up went through Eugene and then made the turn to the coast down to Reedsport and uh, poured the whole way just more water <laughs> it was crappy driving I'm used to driving in the rain being from British Columbia it rains all the time so that wasn't too bad and it was Sunday so there was no trucks on the road really and not much traffic but it was just a pain in the, the butt to, to drive in the rain um, kind of the rain kind of subsided as we actually started getting to the coast which is kind of the opposite um, and then we hit Reedsport and headed over to Salmon Harbor Marina, which is where we are now. It's in Winchester Bay. Uh, it's a spot we like. There's a dry camping area right in the marina area. And you kind of on a little jetty. Um, there's all kinds of spots around it. So in the summertime, it must just get super packed here. But to this time of year, we're on this giant kind of jetty with maybe like 30 camp spots and we're the only RV. So we're right against the the water we get to you know, watch the birds go around it's very peaceful here so we kind of like it so I decided to, to book a week um, they have spots here I think it's 150 for the weekly rate and 180 we have a bigger spot we paid 180 to get a bigger spot and get closer to the very point of the, the jetty which is expensive but on the coast the prices just keep going up all the time I remember three or four years ago this was like 15 a night 10 or 15 a night and now it's crept up um, they have a dump station in Reedsport we went through that because I knew the by the tourist information there's a dump station so we went and dumped our tanks and and got water for preparation because last time I was here at this marina the dump station was closed um, but I just went down there today and drove by and they have two brand new dump stations all set up um, and fresh water fills like two lanes so they've got a brand new system here but the dump station in Reedsport and here they're all ten dollars and they're all those uh, card lock kind of machines that if you want to take your credit card or you can do the tap on my visa does the tap and just put my visa against it tap it's ten bucks and then the thing opens and you can do your dump of your waste and that so they're all set up pretty good here they also have propane on site or Reedsport's very close Anyway, that's up to date for now. We're just kind of eyeballing the weather, but I think once the weekend hits, we'll be able to head back, maybe do a stay at Seven Feathers, and then it'll be probably warm enough, nice and dry and sunny, and get over that, that hump into California. So that's about it. Till next time, Ray from Love You RV. Stay tuned. Cheers, guys.